Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we are here to talk about the Radeon Pro Duo, this graphics card that we have sitting here in front of us. This is the new highest end, highest performance graphics card from AMD and likely the highest performance graphics card that exists in the world. It's had a tumultuous beginning though. If you remember back to June of 2015, AMD's uh, CEO first showed a dual Fiji PCB uh, and said they would be releasing it as the card for gamers that create and creators who game was kind of the tagline they used there. Uh, and it was meant to be a super high performance and high cost graphics card for multiple markets. It was announced at E3. They said it would be out sometime in the October time frame. Uh, obviously that didn't happen. We didn't see the uh, uh, Fury X2, as I called it, actually come out in October, November. And in that time frame, they said, actually, they're going to uh, re-engage with the product, re-kind of settle on a direction for it in Q2, timing it with the release of all of the VR headsets, the HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, that type of thing. So um, we have it now. It actually was uh, launched here in April. Um, interesting kind of tidbit. AMD did not send these cards out for review to the typical kind of gaming hardware media. They're really targeting this card towards the pro, uh, like not pro summary, but even professional markets. They really want it to go into the hands of developers, uh, professional creators, anyone who's doing a lot of rendering work, people who are building games, who want to have access to multiple GPUs. Uh, and there's a lot of benefit to that, right? Multi-GPU is kind of going through a swing now with DirectX 12 and VR complicating multi-GPU uh, pretty dramatically over what we were used to with DX9, 10, and 11 games. Uh, so getting multiple GPU cards or even multiple GPUs in general to game developers is going to be a big advantage because they'll have experience uh, building games for multi-GPU for VR and for uh, DirectX 12 as we go through the rest of 2016. Now, you can actually still buy this card. It was for sale on Newegg. It's $1,499. It's a very expensive product. Uh, the visual design of it is very similar to the Fury X. It looks like a Fury X, just a little bit longer. Actually, it's quite a, quite a bit longer, but it still has uh, water cooling. There's two pumps on the two Fiji XT GPUs. Each still has four gigs of HBM memory. These are full Fiji GPUs, essentially identical in kind of specifications and implementation to the Radeon R9 Nano. So you have an up to clock speed of 1000 megahertz, though you'll see in our review that the clock speeds are, are going to be below that for the vast majority of time, and they kind of waver in and around between 850 and 950 megahertz or so. Uh, the water cooling goes to a single 120 millimeter radiator, although it is uh, thicker than normal, and uh, a single fan on there. In terms of power connectors, it requires three 8-pin power connectors, which is a lot, especially considering the TDP of the card is only rated at 350 watts. If you remember back to the R9 295X2, that monster card from two years ago, it had two 8-pin connectors, but had a kind of a TDP rating of 500 watts. So things have changed quite a bit. If you look at the front panel connectors, you have three full-size DisplayPort connections and one full-size HDMI. That's actually a change from when uh, they showed it at the Capsaicin event in March, where it had four DisplayPort connections. Obviously, having one HDMI port is kind of a requirement if you want to use the Oculus Rift. Um, so from a specifications point, there's a lot of performance here. This is, this is faster than, uh, it's got more compute capability than the Fury X, uh, than the Titan X, than the 980 Ti. All of those cards, if you look at single cards, this is going to have uh, the most compute capability. AMD, or NVIDIA never released a dual Maxwell card. They had been rumored to do so for you know, you know, several months as well, but they decided not to bring that card out. Now we did in our review, if you go to PCPro.com, we've got all the benchmarks and stuff laid out. We looked at a couple of professional applications for this. We ran uh, Luxmark, which is a very popular OpenCL based ray tracing rendering benchmark. And you can see how that compares uh, to the likes of uh, the 980Ti, 980Ti SLI. Um, and we also did some testing with 3D Studio Max, or 3DS Max as they just call it now, uh, and did some rendering there with a plugin that AMD calls Fire Render. And what's interesting about this plugin is that it is the it is an open plugin. All the source code is on GitHub. It's built to do ray tracing and path tracing um, for 3ds Max and other applications in the uh, in the near future, but in an open way. The other kind of I, Nvidia iRay tech those are built using CUDA. Um, they're obviously proprietary to NVIDIA hardware. You can't do that type of ray tracing work on AMD hardware. So AMD had to go out and build Fire Render, and it's OpenCL based, so you can run it on any Radeon card, any Fire Pro card, any GeForce card or Quadro card, anything else, even processors, you can run it on that if you want to. Uh, and it scales pretty well. Uh, in the sample scene that I used, which was a 
Stormtrooper helmet sitting on the ground. Um, one, the Radeon Pro with just one GPU enabled took about 30 seconds to render the scene, a single frame of the scene, whereas with two GPUs, it went down to 19 seconds. So you're seeing a significant scaling rate there. But it's worth noting, uh, even with the AMD Fire Render technology, it was actually faster on the 980 Ti or two 980 Ti cards uh, running in a system. So uh, if you want, to inter if you look at it in terms of performance uh, per square millimeter or whatever you want to get into in terms of space, you're going to get the most performance out of this card. It's two slots, although you do have this water cooler you have to, uh, you know, take care of. Um, but you can get some pretty impressive. Uh, professional level performance out of this card. But we, as PC Perspective, we have a lot of our readers, the vast majority of readers are gamers, enthusiasts, they want to know how this thing performs in games. And the answer is, it varies quite a bit. Um, it depends on Crossfire and multi-GPU scaling to really take advantage of, uh, of the total compute capability of the card. And as we have seen in the past, in general, Crossfire tends to be a little bit behind SLI when it comes to frame pacing and smoothness and experience when you're running multiple GPUs. Um, and we ran through, we did four different games this time. We did Fallout 4, um, we did Grand Theft Auto 5, we did The Witcher 3, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, as well as 3D Mark, uh, Fire Strike Extreme, and Ultra. And you can go through there and look through, look through the benchmarks. In general, the uh, Radeon Pro Duo is an incredibly fast card. It's uh, about 50% faster up to 75% faster, I think, in a couple of cases than the Radeon R9 Fury X. So if you just look at uh, the best single card solution from AMD versus the next step down best single card solution, which would have been the, the Fury X, we do have results for the 295X2 in there as well, even though you can't really buy it anymore if you're kind of interested to see how it compares. It's nice to see that this card is in the range of 20 to 30% faster than that, but it has a TDP of a, that is 150 watts less than the 295X2, so that's actually a, a really good indication of the efficiency improvements that uh, Fiji has over Hawaii. But the 980Ti SLI configuration is actually faster, I think, in every case but one specific instance uh, in The Witcher 3. And in all those cases, the 980Ti SLI configuration is more consistent in its frame time uh, output, right? So it's a smoother experience and it tends to be higher frame rates. There are a couple of instances, in particular if you look at uh, the Witcher 3, for example, the uh, gameplay, actually, the, the kind of average frame rates only have the 980Ti SLI configuration as 7% faster at 2560 by 1440. But if you look at the frame time graph, there's a huge difference in the experience. And if you look at the frame variance graph uh, that we have, there are uh, many, th there's a wide span between even, say, the last 20% of frame times that exist on the Radeon Pro Duo versus the 980 Ti SLI. So uh, that, it gives you an idea of what we're looking at here. If we talk about pricing, if we talk about pricing, this is $1499, $1499. $1 you can get two 980 Ti's for about $1220 to $1250. Um, and you can actually get two Radeon R9 Nanos for under $1000. And this is the absolute equivalent of two Radeon R9 Nanos smashed together in one graphics card. Uh, if you have the space in your system and uh, you know actually uses less power connectors even, um, then two R9 Nanos is going to get you the exact same experience and performance that the Radeon Pro Duo will give you in terms of gaming. If you uh, uh, want to go on the NVIDIA side and you're okay spending a little bit more money for 1200 bucks or so, you can actually get a better overall gaming experience. Now, it's fair to say that when you get into graphics cards at this price level, performance per dollar is not usually the metric by which all decisions are made. If it were, nobody would ever buy, you know, the $700 video card, let alone the $1,500 video card like this. It's more about what your status is, if you want to show off, and if you just have the money and you just want the best item that exists. Um, if you want the single best graphics card, fastest graphics card, this is probably it, but it doesn't provide a solid enough experience that I'd really recommend it. If you're going to spend that money, go with two GPUs, you know, go with two 980Ti SLIs or even two Fury X cards for that matter. But what I would actually recommend is since we are so close to the release of Pascal and the release of Polaris that everybody should just wait. This is a card that's come out, you know, significantly later than expected. Like I said, it was announced last June. It was shown for the first time last June as a, as a PCB and as a concept. 
Uh, and it's just now coming out here as we're about to cross into May. So it's been a full year since we first saw it to when it came out. The Fiji architecture is on its way out the door to be replaced by Polaris. AMD has admitted this. They, you know, they, it's going to be available in June. They've been very upfront about it. Uh, and they've talked about the vast efficiency improvements that that architecture will offer. What I don't think you'll get from Polaris is a card near this performance level. Even a dual Polaris card, if it exists immediately, won't offer the performance of this. Um, and obviously you have to worry about, uh, you'll have the same or very similar crossfire restrictions and complications to deal with there. And even the same thing for people who might be considering a 980 Ti, right? If, if you're considering a 980 Ti today or two, you should be waiting for Pascal. Pascal will be out this summer as well, probably in the same time frame as Polaris, uh, and they will probably have higher performance parts available uh, out the gate than Polaris will. We'll still have to see how that stacks up. Um, so while I, I can't recommend anybody buy the Radeon Pro Duo unless you have a very specific use case, you're a professional user, that you have uh, you know, very specific workloads that need the kind of the 16 teraflops of compute that you get, that you get with this product, and you want to do some gaming and you're okay with uh, some of the crossfire trade-offs and, and, and issues that, that come up with that, then by all means, ask your IT department to buy one of these for you. Uh, if you're a gamer, this is not the product to buy, uh, and honestly, I don't think any GPU today, especially if you're going into the high end where price per performance per dollar is kind of uh, a tougher metric, no GPU is really the right purchase today. Um, but it's an interesting product to look at. I'm glad we have one. I'm glad we were able to get one in, and we'll be able to have these numbers and metrics to look at as we see the future releases throughout the rest of 2016. We have a lot more details, pictures, diagrams, benchmarks, uh, and the full review over at PCPro.com. I would encourage you guys uh, to go over there and check it out. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash PCPer.